Hello students, in the previous chapter we discussed about few important uh, concepts related to the solids. So we discussed about uh, stress strain, different types of stress strains and as well as modulus of elasticity and also some of the important practical applications of uh, elastic behavior of materials. So in this chapter we are going to discuss something about the important properties, mechanical properties of fluids. So first, what are fluids? The substances which begins to flow under the influence of external, sub, external force is called, are called as fluids. Any substance which begins to flow itself under the influence of external force are called as fluids. Both the gases as well as what? Liquids are collectively called as fluids. Any gas or any liquid is called as what? A fluid. For example, water, mercury, kerosene, honey, glycerin are all fluids. Similarly, any type of gas is considered as in what? A fluid. So, both gases and liquids are collectively called as fluids. Next, fluid pressure. So, we know that the fluid always exerts the pressure. So, we know that both the liquids as well as what? Gases do not possess definite shape as well as volume. So, usually liquid possesses the liquid takes the shape of the container. So, liquid always exerts the any liquid as well as any fluid always exerts the pressure on any surface which is in contact with okay, which is in contact with it. So, first we will study the important properties of the fluids which are at rest only. So, if you consider some amount of liquid for example, if you consider some liquid in a container so in a vessel I will consider some liquid this liquid always exerts the pressure on all the three surfaces on this surface also, this surface also as well as what? this surface also how do you, what direction it exerts the pressure? that pressure always exerts normal to the surface normal to the surface so how can you define the fluid pressure? it is defined as thrust acting per unit area what do you mean by thrust? thrust is nothing but force how does this force is acting? this force always acts normal to the surface any surface which is in contact with it so thrust acting per unit area is called as pressure or fluid pressure it is given by the formula P mathematical form is given by P is equal to F by A where F is the thrust or force where A is the area of cross section you know that SI unit of force is Newton, SI unit of area is meter square that is given by Newton per meter square. Next, atmospheric pressure. So we know that earth is surrounded by a gaseous envelope which is, not, which is called as atmosphere. So atmosphere also exerts the pressure on the earth which is called as atmospheric pressure. So pressure exerted by the atmosphere on the earth is called as atmospheric pressure. So here at sea level, if you measure the atmospheric pressure at sea level, so its value is given by 1 atmosphere, 1 at atm is equal to 1.013 into 10 power 5 Pascal. It is possible to measure the atmospheric pressure. Its value is different at different places at sea level, at standard sea level. If you measure the atmospheric pressure, its value is given by 1.013 into 10 power 5 Pascal. So, SI unit of pressure, another, another SI unit is Pascal, is, you, you can use Pascal also. So, 1 ATM value, remember this thing, 1 ATM value is 1.013 into 10.5 Pascal. How can you measure the atmospheric pressure? There is an instrument which is used to measure the atmospheric pressure which is called as barometer. So, barometer is a device which is used to measure the atmospheric pressure. So, its value is different at different places. As we go above the earth's surface as well as below the earth's surface, its value changes. So, its atmospheric pressure value is maximum on the surface of the earth. As we go above the earth's surface as well as as we go below the earth's surface, its value decreases. Its maximum on the surface of the earth. Next, expression. Expression for hydrostatic pressure. So, there is a vessel which contains some liquid. So, the pressure at any point P inside the liquid which is at a depth H, this point is at a depth H from the surface of the liquid. At this particular point, pressure is given by 
Pa, which is nothing but atmospheric pressure plus H rho G, where H is the depth to that particular point from the free surface, where rho is the density of the liquid, where G is the acceleration due to gravity. The pressure at any point inside the liquid, which is called as hydrostatic pressure, is given by P is equal to Pa plus H rho G. So next, uh, there are few vessels are there which contains liquid. So in these three vessels, the amount of liquid present is different. So all the three vessels contains different amount of liquid. Their weights are different here, but till pressure is same. And each and the pressure at this particular point, the pressure at this particular point as well as what? Pressure at this particular point is all always same. Why means? Here depth or the height of the liquid level is same on in all these three cases, and hence the pressure is also same. Similarly, in this in this case also, the height attained by the liquid is same, even though the area of cross section of these three vessels are different, shape of the vessels are different, the pressure is same because of that reason only height attained by the liquid is same. And hence, in all these cases, the pressure is same. Since in the expression for pressure, we can see that pressure is mainly depend upon what h. It depends only on h. Since rho, which is nothing but density of the liquid, it is always constant. Where g is the acceleration due to gravity, that is also constant. Where p a atmospheric pressure, this value is constant. And hence, pressure at any point inside the liquid, which is at rest, is always same. It depends upon what? It depends only on height attained by the liquid level. That's it. So remember this, th these things. Pressure means thrust acting per unit area, which is nothing but the force acting per unit area. How does this force is acting? This force due to the pressure always acts in a direction normal to the surface, which is in contact with it. For example, if you place your hand on the free surface of the liquid, any liquid, you can feel the experience of force produced by the liquid. Next, unit Newton per meter square, atmospheric pressure, its standard value as well as instrument which is used to measure the atmospheric pressure and this thing, this expression is very important. The pressure at any point inside the liquid which is at rest is given by P is equal to Pa plus H rho G. Okay students, next, gauge pressure. So, actually what we measure the pressure, that is actually gauge pressure. How do we define gauge pressure? The difference between the hydrostatic pressure and the atmospheric pressure that will give the gauge pressure. So the formula for gauge pressure is P minus PA is equal to H rho G. So the difference between the hydrostatic pressure and the atmospheric pressure is called as gauge pressure. Gauge pressure is given by the formula H into rho into G. Next. One of the important physical quantity that we have to study that is density. How can we find density? Density is defined as the ratio of mass divided by volume. So that is m by v. Its SI unit is kg per meter cube. Next, what are the factors which are affecting the density of the fluid? First one, effect of temperature. What happens to the density when the temperature increases or decreases? First, when the temperature is increased, when the temperature is increased, what happens to the density? As the temperature increases, we know that all the three material states, both solids, liquids as well as what? Gases undergoes expansion. That means, as the temperature increases, volume also increases. As the temperature increases, volume increases. Therefore, what about the density? Here, by using this ratio, relation, density is equal to mass by volume. Here, mass, since mass remains same, density is inversely proportional to volume. Density is inversely proportional to volume. That means, as the temperature increases, volume increases. Volume increases, denominator, denominator term increases. That means, density decreases. Remember this point. As the temperature increases, temperature of any fluid increases, density decreases. Similarly, effect of pressure. What happens to the density of a fluid when the pressure is increased? As the pressure increases, so we know the relation between the pressure and the volume. How they are related? They are inversely proportional to each other. That means, with respect to the increase in volume, pressure decreases. With respect to the increase in volume, pressure decreases. So here, as the pressure decreases, 
as the pressure increases if you increase the pressure if you increase the pressure volume so volume what are the volume if v is inversely proportional to p here p is inversely proportional to v or v is inversely proportional to p as the pressure increases volume decreases as the volume decreases as the volume decreases what happens what happens to the density density increases so remember this thing when pressure increases density also increases so when temperature increases density of the fluid decreases remember these two points next one of the very important term that is pascal's law so first i will read the statement if the gravity effect is neglected that means if you will not consider the effect of gravity then pressure at each and every point inside the liquid which is at rest is always remain same that means if the pressure is increased at one particular point inside the liquid by any some means then what happens that change in pressure is equally transmitted to each and every point inside the liquid and hence the pressure also remains same at each and every point at any inside any container if you consider any container if the pressure is increased at this particular point by any some means external source then what will happen the change in pressure is equally transmitted to each and every point and hence the pressure at each and every point always remains same that is the pascal's law if the gravity effect is not considered if the gravity effect is neglected then only pressure at each and every point inside the liquid which is at rest is always remains same that is pascal's law next we will go through the some of the important applications of uh, pascal's law then you can easily understand this uh, uh, pascal's law hydraulic brakes in normal in vehicles hydraulic brakes are used hydraulic press as well as hydraulic lift so usually in uh, uh, car service stations we have to lift the car to uh, we have to lift the car on, on that case normally we will use hydraulic lift car in order to lift any heavy object normally we will use hydraulic lift car or any heavy object so this is the schematic diagram of what hydraulic lift it consists of two cylinders one is c and another one is d both of these cylinders are fitted by a piston movable piston so here this is the piston having the area of cross section small a and this is the piston having the area of cross section capital a so by observing this figure only it is clear that capital a is very much greater than more small a. capital a is very much greater than small a next apply a small force f here apply the small force f for this piston on this piston then what will happen then this piston moves in downward direction as the piston moves in downward direction as the piston moves in downward direction then what will happen the pressure at this point changes the pressure at this particular point p increases then according to this pascal's law that increase in pressure is transmitted to each and every point inside the liquid which is at rest so whatever the fluid which are which we are using here that is rest that is at rest state only therefore the increase in pressure at this particular point is equally transmitted to each and every point inside the liquid or inside the container so now the pressure at this particular point if you can consider the pressure at this particular point i can write it as p is equal to f by u pressure is equal to force acting per unit area applied force is f that is acting in the downward direction area of cross section of this cylinder is a therefore the force acting on this piston is nothing but f is equal to p into a a small force is applied here next at this particular point if you consider the pressure at this particular point that is given by p is equal to f by a where f is the force here force is acting in which direction force is acting in upward direction where a is the area of cross section therefore in this case force is given by capital f is equal to p into a but what is p here according to pascal's law whatever the pressure changes here that is equally transmitted to each and every point therefore the pressure at this point is also p pressure at this point is also p pressure at this particular point is also p only therefore f is equal to p into a substitute the expression of pressure that is small f by small a here then you get capital p is equal to p is equal to f into capital a divided by small a which one is greater here 
capital A is very much greater when compared to small a. That means, what does it indicate? Capital F is very much greater than what? Small f. That means, by applying a very small force here, we will get the very large force. Why? Because of which reason? Because of the reason, capital A is very much greater than small a, and hence, capital F is greater than small f. Easily, you can lift the heavy object. Heavy object moves in which direction? Upward direction. Why it moves in upward direction? Here the force is acting in upward direction. Therefore, heavy object is in moves in upward direction. So, therefore, I will repeat once again. Pascal's law states that if you are not considering the effect of gravity, that means if you consider gravity effect is not there, then you can say that pressure at each and every point inside the fluid which is at rest is always remain same. That means if you increase the pressure at one point, that increase in pressure is equally transmitted to each and every point and hence the pressure remains same. And few important applications of what? Uh, Pascal's law. Okay students, next concept Archimedes principle. First I will go through this statement once again. So when an object is immersed partially or completely in a liquid, then it experiences an upward force. And because of this upward force, the body floats on the surface. So when an object is immersed partially or completely in a liquid, it experiences an upward force. That means the liquid tries to eject it out. By applying upward force, it tries to eject it out from the liquid. And this upward force is called as bion force and this phenomenon is called as buoyancy. We all know that it is very easy to lift heavy object inside the liquid. Why means? So this liquid exerts an which force? Bion force and this bion force acts in which direction? Upward direction and hence it is easy to lift heavy object inside the liquid. An iron rod, it is a stone, a very big stone. It can be easily lift inside the liquid. Why means? Because of this buoyant force. And this upward force, which is nothing but the buoyant force, which is acting in upward direction, is always equal to weight of the liquid which is displaced by the body. This upward force is always equal to weight of the liquid displaced by the body. Next, expression for buoyant force. So here, if an object is immersed in a liquid of density sigma, then if it displaces the liquid of volume V, then bion force F is equal to V into sigma into G, where sigma is the density of the liquid, where V is the volume which is displaced by the object and G is the acceleration due to gravity. Next, apparent weight of the body. When it is when the object is when the body is immersed partially or completely, the apparent weight of the body can be calculated by using this formula. Apparent weight is equal to actual weight minus up thrust. So when the object is immersed partially or completely in a liquid, the actual weight remains same. The weight of the object appears to change only, and hence it is called as what? Apparent weight. It's not an actual weight. Actual weight always remains same, whether it is placed outside the liquid or whether it is immersed partially or immersed completely, its actual weight always remains same. Only the thing changes, its weight appears to be changed and it is called as apparent weight. Apparent weight is equal to actual weight minus up thrust. Therefore, it can be written as W apparent is equal to W minus up thrust. Up thrust is nothing but what? Force. And it is acting in which direction? Upward direction. Therefore, W apparent is equal to W minus F upward. Therefore, W apparent is equal to weight. How can you write the expression for weight? Weight is nothing but M into G, where M is the mass. How can you write the expression for mass? Mass is equal to density is equal to mass by volume. Therefore, mass can be written as volume into density into G. That's what I have written here. W is equal to V into rho into G. What is rho here? Rho is the density of the object, where sigma is the density of the liquid, where rho is the density of the object into G minus. You already have the expression for bion force here, that is V into sigma into G, therefore it can be written as Vg. I will take Vg common, then it becomes Vg into rho minus sigma. Now, once again I will take rho common here, then you get the expression V rho G into 1 minus sigma by rho, where V rho G is nothing but what? Actual weight of the object, therefore apparent weight is equal to actual weight multiplied by 1 minus sigma divided by rho. Remember this expression, it is very important. 
apparent weight is equal to actual weight of the object multiplied by 1 minus sigma divided by rho where sigma is the density of the liquid rho is the density of the object so here apparent weight that depends upon what rho as well as what sigma that means the density of the object as well as what the density of the liquid so here depending upon the values of the rho as well as sigma you can say when the when at what at what condition at which condition object sinks at the bottom or it is completely immersed in the uh, liquid or it floats so that depends upon the value that depends upon of what values of rho as well as sigma if the density of the solid object if the density of the object is greater than the density of the liquid then what will happen the object completely sinks at the bottom object completely sinks at the bottom in this case next third one if the density of the object is equal to density of the liquid what we are using here liquid then what will happen so the object will float but it is completely immersed in the liquid object floats but it is completely immersed in the liquid next in the third condition if the density of the object is less than the density of the liquid then what will happen the object will floats at the surface the object starts to float at the surface only so these three conditions are usually called as what loss of flotation so when the object flows floats at the surface only when the density of the object is less than the density of the liquid you see so this is about the archimedes principle it is very very important so when an object is completely when an object is immersed completely or partially in a liquid then what will happen it experiences an upward force that experience an upward force is nothing but bayard force that phenomenon is known as what buoyancy and the expression for bayard force as well as expression for apparent weight apparent loss in weight of the object as well as the conditions for what condition for flotation okay students so far we discussed about the properties of the fluids which are at rest only now we are going to discuss the properties of the fluids or the important phenomena related to the fluids which are in motion so the liquids can have two types of motion one is streamline flow and another one is turbulent flow what do you mean by streamline flow streamline flow is nothing but ordered flow regular flow of a liquid or any fluid is called as streamline flow in this case each and every particles of the liquid possesses the same velocity at a particular point all the liquid molecules which are coming to this particular point will have the same velocity or cross this particular point with the same velocity v1 all the liquid particles which are crossing this point b with the same velocity v2 velocity at point a may be different from that of velocity of the particles at point b but all the liquid particles molecules possesses the same velocity v1 at the point a and all the liquid molecules possesses the same velocity v2 at the point b this type of flow is called as streamline flow in case of streamline flow all the liquid particles possesses the same velocity same speed at different points so this type of flow is called as streamline flow what do you mean by streamline streamline it may be a what a straight line or a curved path it may be a straight line or curved path along which the liquid is flowing so at a particular point here if you draw a tangent at this particular point that will indicate the direction of the flow of liquid so streamline it may be a straight line or a curved line that is drawn in a such a way that the tangent drawn to the streamline at each and every point indicates the direction of the flow of liquid so example smooth flow of liquid in a particular pipe so in a pipe if the liquid flows with a very small velocity then that type of flow of uh, liquid is called as streamline flow next second type of flow is turbulent flow if it is an ordered flow then it is streamline if it is not an ordered flow that means if it is a disordered flow then the flow of a liquid is called as what turbulent flow so this, that means in this case all the liquid particles possess the same velocity at a particular point but in this case the different particles possesses different velocities different speeds at a particular point then that type of flow is called as turbulent flow here the velocity is not small the liquid moves with higher velocity 
example motion of water on a river so river flows a uh, river flows in such a way that different particles possesses different speeds and that type of flow is called as turbulent flow for example when you switch on the tap then what will happen the flow of liquid is nothing but what turbulent flow on that case next critical velocity when you say the liquid is having streamlined flow or a turbulent flow that will depend upon what as i said earlier it depends upon the velocity that velocity is nothing but what critical velocity if the velocity of the liquid flow exceeds a particular point then the flow becomes turbulent otherwise it is a what streamlined flow the velocity above which the flow becomes turbulent is called as critical velocity the velocity of the fluid above which the flow becomes turbulent is called as uh, above which the uh, flow becomes turbulent is called as critical velocity next important concept equation of condition so now i will consider by having uh, irregular cross section here and c having the cross section a1 and d having the cross section a2 so liquid enters the tube with a pipe with a velocity v1 and the liquid leaves the tube with the velocity v2 so we know that the amount of liquid entering the tube is always equal to amount of liquid leaving the tube provided if there is no leakage if there is no leakage in the pipe the amount of liquid entering the tube is always equal to amount of liquid leaving the tube therefore you can write mass of the liquid entering per second at point c at the end c mass of the liquid entering per second at c is always equal to mass of the liquid leaving per second at the point d or at the end d how can you write it like this since the amount of liquid entering the tube is always equal to amount of liquid leaving the tube provided if there is no leakage mass of a liquid how can you write the expression for mass so we know that density is equal to mass by volume so therefore mass can be written as volume into density so displacement per second which is nothing but volume is that equal to distance covered per second distance per se divided by time that is nothing but velocity therefore i can write mass as what velocity into density that's what i have written here so here so volume can be written as area into what area into displacement displacement per second is velocity therefore mass is equal to area into displacement into rho displacement per second is velocity therefore i can write it as area into velocity into density i will repeat once again density is equal to mass by volume mass can be written as volume into density volume means area into displacement displacement per second here we are considering amount of liquid entering as well as leaving per second displacement per second is nothing but velocity therefore you can write it as mass of the liquid entering per second at the end c is equal to a1 into v1 into rho where a1 is the area of cross section at this part v1 velocity with which the liquid is entering where rho is the density that is always equal to a2 into v2 into rho where a2 is the area of cross section at this particular end v2 is the velocity with which the liquid is ejected where rho is the density of the liquid same liquid is entering and the same liquid is leaving that means density is same density term gets cancelled then you can write a1 v1 is equal to a2 v2 or you can write the product of a and v is always equal to constant that means the product of area of cross section and the velocity is always equal to constant rhs should be constant that means if area increases that means one should be, velocity should be decreased then only this product remains same or constant therefore it can be written as v this equation is called as equation of condition now we can write it as v is inversely proportional to what a where v is the velocity a is the area of cross section if area of cross section is more if area of cross section is more since v is inversely related to a v should be less if area of cross section is less v should be more this equation is called as equation of condition